Hi, and welcome to a new episode of the Uncut, the Feminine Podcast. If you're here for the first time, my name is Juana, and I'm the founder of TheFeminine.com, an online community dedicated to women all over the world. The Feminine is a place where we discuss vitality, healthy bodies, fulfilling emotional lives, passion, sensuality, relationships, and the importance of sisterhood with the intention to map a comprehensive guide into anything that is important, essential, for living a fulfilled life as a woman. For the past 14 years, I've been a transformational coach, and in the last seven, I've dedicated my entire work to empowering women all over the world. Women need to trust their voice, follow their heart, and embrace their womanhood with no fear and no shame. And in this community, each and every month, we discuss any topic that is related to our femininity. And today we have a very special edition because the holidays are coming and the end of the year is also coming. And it's a time of reflection for most of us. It's also a time of bonding and connecting to the ones dear to us. And it's an emotional period in our lives, more than usual. And we decided to tackle a very tender matter called compassion and self-care and why would that be relevant for us as women during this time of the year, December. I'm here with my partner Joanna and uh, we're going to go through some of the women that have wrote to us and also wanted to find out more on how they can develop compassion in their lives and also gonna take on exploring more of this topic through the questions that Joanna is going to bring to to the dialogue, to the podcast. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Juana. Nice to see you again. For those who didn't uh, have the occasion to read or watch our content on compassion, we have a very, very beautiful mantra. We called it mantra. And it also seems that our listeners and readers are starting to respond to this mantra because it's a very strong one. So I'm going to start with a question coming from Ruxandra. And Ruxandra writes, I'm crying every single time I listen to this mantra. I am on the journey to love myself and to be gentle with myself, but still I feel there is such a long way to go. How can I forgive myself for all that I or others say I did wrong? It's a very powerful question, it's longer, she elaborates on this, but I think the question Ruxandra is uh, coming forward with is something we all have in mind all the time. We, we know, rationally know, we are not guilty or that we have to forgive ourselves, but there's a voice, that voice in our heads that comes over and over again and tells us every single time we did something wrong. Yeah, I'm going to actually take a little bit of uh, Ruxandra's message and elaborate on it because she also wrote, how can I make the process accelerate? Do I have to tell myself that I'm beautiful, hug myself and give all the compassion I need? Coming from the inner self and not others. uh, I start doing that in the morning after my meditation and ritual, but during the day I tend to forget it and then that voice coming from my biological mother that I'm not good enough is coming back. How can I do apart from staying with my inner child and the ideal mother and try to give myself all the love that I need? And I wanted to to um, actually uh, name her full message because this is the immediate thing we think when we think compassion is loving myself and becoming more gentle with myself. And yes, that is a way of expressing love for myself, but actually compassion is much more than that. It's actually the place where my heart fully opens to the experience I'm undergoing. And Most of the times for us, that experience is something we avoid because it's either painful or uncomfortable. And um, how we can accelerate that process of love is actually accepting where we are and the struggle that we are experiencing in relationship to that voice. Because that voice has always been present. Everybody has it in one version or another. I'm not good enough. And um, we pick up those voices in our childhood 
from our caretakers, from our parents, and most of them are negative voices, negative imprints. And the thing that we don't see or we try to avoid is how we feel when we hear that voice. But actually accessing that feeling is what's going to open our heart. And most of the times our heart opens to emotions. It's not a mental process. So compassion is the fragrance of our heart opening to any emotion, whether it's a painful or uncomfortable emotion, whether it's an emotion of joy and love. And it's a natural phenomenon. You don't have to do it. You don't have to work through it. You just have to accept where you are and open yourself to that emotion. And then it will naturally come. You will become your best friend without knowing how to do that, even without reading a manual on best friend (laughs) interaction. Because it's natural for us to um, open to love. It's the most human basic capacity we have. But we tend to block it because we avoid the fear of the pain or the fear of the emotion that's trying to surface in that situation. So my input to Ruxandra would be to just give herself time because only the mind wants to accelerate. Give herself time and accept her situation. Accept where she is exactly the way she is. And um, also, Ruxandra, uh, while I'm accepting where I am, open myself to those emotions that I actually experience and have been experiencing in relationship to this voice, I'm not good enough. Your words work like a meditation and I remember something you also said related to compassion that being aware is the fundamentals for ch- are the fundamentals for change. But I feel, I somehow feel, Roxandra would be very happy if we come back to her with a, a short version of a how-to, a three-step guide to how to be more compassionate with yourself. Because it is is very nice, it's very poetic, and it works if you are all the time aware about being compassionate, but who can do that? Based on what you just said, I think we have to distinguish that compassion is not positive thinking or positive approach. That's one thing. Compassion is actually you becoming present to what's actually happening underneath it all for yourself on an emotional level. And the moment you bring presence and awareness to that experience, then you have access to freedom. So the three-step formula into freedom, into any emotional situation, is the moment your emotional self bubbles up and you feel an inner tension or a conflict, or you experience pain in any way, and you know, you can feel it, your mind can't control the situation anymore, and that emotion is bubbling up and you feel like you're overwhelmed, in that moment, just stop stop and take some time for yourself exactly in that moment and start breathing giving yourself mental space from that emotional upheaval by just accepting that you're going through an emotional upheaval right there right in that moment and breathing with your emotions the moment they get uh, intense is what calms them down and it's, it's giving your mind an access to distance itself and observe whatever wants to boil out to the surface. And by just observing and breathing, the emotion can turn into a thought. And then you'll be able to actually understand, demystify what is the feeling you're experiencing right then. Maybe you're feeling weak, maybe you're feeling unprotected, maybe you're feeling scared, maybe you're feeling abandoned. And the moment you understand how you are actually feeling, the natural gesture would be to hug yourself or accept where you are or just bring kindness to yourself in that moment. Through either accepting it or embracing yourself or just making a small gesture of kindness towards yourself. And this is very healing. And it, it opens the heart and it also brings compassion into the situation. It's how you actually become your best friend. 
I think another good distinction and useful for Alexandra too is making the uh, distinction between uh, being compassionate and sacrificing yourself because I can feel uh, many of us exactly in that moment that you describe get stuck and say I can't be compassionate because I feel like I'm sacrificing myself now and why I'm asking this is because we also had a very beautiful story uh, about the legend of Kuan Yin and if you read the story with the eyes of a usual reader can think that girl sacrificed herself for everybody and for everything what's the the small uh, the, the small thing that makes the distinction between sacrifice and being compassionate yeah in that story of Kuan Yin uh, she was also uh, giving kindness and compassion to everything even if people were asking her to sacrifice her life and she would gladly do that i just wanted to for those who didn't g- got a chance to read it to understand a little bit of the context well it's not a sacrifice because in the moment you accept your pain or whatever you are challenged you have freedom that's what people don't understand you are weak when you avoid whatever is actually going on when you avoid your emotions when you avoid the pain or the separation or the distance you experience in a situation in the moment you accept it you have power and you have freedom it comes natural so whenever you are asked to do something you're in a place of power and that doesn't look like a sacrifice it looks like a sacrifice from the mind because the mind is not in that moment of that person fully connected to the situation moving forward to emily's question emily writes hi one i've been going round and round with the same problem becoming too good will make me stress out being a bad person will make me even worse i think i will be stuck with the same problem always questioning myself what's the solution well if we if we look at compassion as the ability to feel ourselves and feel others i think it's understanding that the issue here is questioning herself so questioning yourself emily and i would i would work with that i would start giving myself space to deal with my lack of confidence regardless of what decision i make because i can change my decision in every situation or i can finally rest with one and be at peace but to get to that place where i am confident and i can own my decision and i am taking the risk of it i need to find a way to embrace that i am confused and work with my confusion and compassion is actually that feeling your confusion feeling your lack of confidence and accepting it again and allowing it to be and giving for example like you would be your best friend in this situation what advice would you give to that part of yourself who doesn't have that confidence yet and i would rather take some time some practice of just talking to me being with myself until i can experience this confusion again and again and again and breathing with it and it becomes familiar and it is not something that i'm afraid of and the moment confusion will become familiar it will melt that's the that's the surprise of it because the moment we stay with a particular attitude a particular emotion long enough and we accept it we fully learn it we digest it we understand it in that moment that emotion melts it dissipates so the cure for lack of confidence and confusion would be to just embrace the lack of confidence and confusion and not make any decision until you're in a place of clarity but know that if you accept that lack of confidence and then you breathe with it and you stay with it with the intention to give yourself permission and space to go through that confusion then there will be a moment where it all it will dissipate and it will all become clear because why staying with yourself accepting yourself giving yourself permission being patient with yourself is the tools through which compassion works and compassion can be a great healer and in that time 
while you adjust with that emotion, you grow. You grow in your power in relationship to that confusion. You're not afraid of it anymore. It doesn't scare you. And the moment you gain power in relationship to that, you also gain clarity. So I don't know if the decision is to be a good person or a bad person. Uh, I don't know if uh, good or bad are uh, really um, true to any situation. But I trust the Emily that will know what to do in every situation because I trust the Emily that is willing to accept her and stay with her confusion long enough until it becomes clear. Can we say that compassion can be a very soft and feminine way and also say it's advanced to take care of ourselves? Yes, but it, it is a profound practice. It's not it's not a pampering or being spoiled or, uh, you know, going on a holiday or a shopping therapy whenever you feel you have a bad day. Compassion really is about this capacity of being ruthless with your pain and, and somehow, you know, opening to the truth and going under the fire of your own inner truth, no matter how painful it is, um, and experiencing that power and the freedom that comes out of it. So it can start as a gentle exercise or practice in your life, but it can go very deep through the whole process. And I think it's a very powerful process. I've experienced tremendous healing in my life due to this practice. And it wasn't comfortable all the time. And I think that's what I actually want to point out, that compassion is not necessarily about a comfortable experience. But it is a healing experience. And what healing, what a healing experience brings is forgiveness, self-forgiveness. It brings freedom and it brings the ability to leave the past behind. So whenever you're really in a situation that you want to finish in your life, you want to end, like the end of the year, you really want to put it behind and start a new resolution, compassion would be the practice. And uh, there's a very simple meditation because I want to give people some very clear, a clear way of practicing it. And it's a very simple meditation created by a Buddhist monk. It's called Atisha. And this monk traveled um, all his life with the intention and the mission to cure and heal all the suffering and the illness of all people. And he devoted his life to that. And he was under a Buddhist uh, philosophy and uh, working with Kuan Yin and Green Tara, which were amazing uh, light beings of compassion and meditation. So by being their disciple, by being their student, he took this challenge of compassion wherever he went. And through his life, he traveled so much and exposed himself to so much physical and emotional and psychological or spiritual pain that he understood at some point that the problem we have in healing or forgiving or leaving the past behind is that we avoid pain. <laughs> and he came up with this very simple practice. He said, everybody is avoiding pain and even the spiritual practices are all about infusing light into our body and releasing the pain. I want to try something else. And he was a very extreme person. He took a very extreme approach. I want to inhale the pain and give light because I'm not afraid of the pain. And I think the pain can alchemize into freedom. It can alchemize into light. So the meditation is very simple. You sit with your back straight in a lotus position and you take up a situation in your life, whether it's a relationship with yourself or a relationship with somebody else, where you are experiencing pain or discomfort or upheaval. And you breathe in that pain and you breathe out compassion. Just by experiencing, I'm taking in the pain in my heart and I'm breathing out compassion. I'm taking in the pain, I'm breathing out compassion. And you do it for five minutes. And then the next five minutes, you breathe in the pain of the other. Or the pain of other people in your life that you know that are in pain. And you breathe out compassion. 
So you expand your awareness to other people's pain, feeling their pain and allowing it to be in your heart, to open your heart to it. You're not taking the pain, you're just opening your heart to that pain and you're breathing out compassion. And the last five minutes, it's a meditation of 15 minutes in total, you are bringing in the pain of other people in the world who are going through the same situation you are going. And you are breathing out compassion. And it's a very expansive practice because you are going to tune in either way on a very clear level, emotional level, or just subtle level to feeling the pain, feeling your pain, feeling other people's pain, feeling even the pain of other people who are going through the same thing. Because most of us think that we are all alone, but actually in the same moment, everybody else, there are so many people out there in the world experiencing just exactly the same amount of pain that we are experiencing or even more in the same situation. We all think it's just us, but there are other people who are doing the same thing in the same moment. And it's a very beautiful practice because just breathing in that pain and breathing out compassion opens the heart. And it has a miracle potency to it because you can actually, through this practice, just doing it for yourself with the, your intention to free yourself up, to become powerful in that experience, you can actually heal yourself and open yourself up beyond that situation, but also have the capacity to heal others. I've experienced it in, in my life and I've done it with, uh, with an intimate relationship and that person, without knowing I'm doing the practice, without even being aware that I was going through that pain because it didn't feel safe enough to, to share my pain with that person that I was experiencing exactly in that relationship, right? You know, those relationships, they're very intense, but you don't feel safe enough. <laughs> Most of us go through that. And I was, I was, I was praying and I was breathing in that pain, my pain, and then the pain of all the women who are going through the same situation, because I bet there are, <laughs> and, and breathing out compassion. And at the end of my practice, I did it for 21 days in a row that person came to me and said that they experienced a tremendous healing in their life. And it opened up a whole new level of intimacy in our relationship because we started talking about pain. So it, it's a very powerful experience. We not only as women have the capacity to deal with pain, we have the capacity to transform pain into freedom and peace of mind. And it's in our heart, but we need to open our hearts to it. This is definitely a feminine value, it is definitely a very strong way of taking care of yourself, but it is also definitely the next level <laughs> for everything. Resilience, power, think of whatever comes into your mind, but uh, your, your advice was extremely good for those who are celebrating Christmas these days, because we all know Christmas can be a very happy season, but in the same time it can be an awfully difficult season. So taking care it of yourself. It is that joke, you know, seeing how much you've grown up, spend three days uh, and three nights with your parents and you'll have a perfect x-ray of your development. <laughs> it will be definitely the next level of uh, showing uh, maturity in uh, encountering your um, difficult shadows during this time, but doing this meditation. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I wanted to share it with you, because sometimes... Holidays can uh, can be a place of deep intimacy and what comes along with deep intimacy in our families or our relationships is sometimes what stops us from feeling intimacy and that can be painful. But I think it's also a good trigger to, to go deeper and not be afraid. And yes, it is the next level, but it is a power we have as women. And uh, it's safe to go there. You'll find yourself powerful in ways that will impress you. They will give you strength. They will inspire you. And they will make you feel more grounded in the new year that's coming with all those miracles and resolutions you want to manifest. So I totally back you up, sister, <laughs> into going deeper and uh, trusting your heart because she knows the way. During the Christmas dinner, if I'm just shattering to pieces, I will just go in the bathroom and breathe along with my mother-in-law. I can have this picture in my mind. 
<laughs> but I will try it and come back with a a, a good story, I promise. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I think this was our podcast and uh, I totally want to salute your effort and your willingness to look at your heart and your life. I think we all go through that moment of of evaluation at the end of the year and I just want to empower you to be brave. It's worth it. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for tuning in. Don't go before subscribing to our weekly newsletter so you can be the first to get it. Jump over to thefeminine.com slash start here. You can also find us on Facebook at The World of the Feminine and write us your comments at woman at thefeminine.com and have your questions answered right here in our next podcast. See you soon and great holidays to everybody.